So this is the beginning of a, this is like module zero and then module five I put together of a, of a class on um, traditional Chinese medical calendar study. Just to kind, of, kind of go through it and introduce you to the, the concept. It's part of us, uh, what's called the mantic arts, which just means like actually in, in Chinese medicine, because it's, it goes back and has this philosophical, cultural tradition of over 10,000 years. It's, uh, it's incredibly absorbed all of the ancient sciences and wisdom traditions of the indigenous Chinese culture, including what? Astrology, including uh, today we call feng shui. The Western word for that is geomancy, right? That's why this is mantic arts. Um, it's kind of how we use different factors to gather information all kinds of different factors, right? Everything, everything, right? Um, the, the broad study of that we'll call mantic arts, but specifically here today we're talking about time, the calendar, and kind of, you can consider it astrology, but then we can have a, a different talk later about what does the word astrology really mean, and is that word accurate to describe what we're talking about? It's a little inaccurate, but anyway, for, for our comprehension today, I'll use that term. Okay, so some quotes from, um, the, the classic text, right? My words are easy to understand and easy to put into practice. Yet few people in the world can understand them. And fewer can put them into practice. Right? So just be prepared. I may have sentences and I may have uh, concepts that I will kind of quickly throw at you. If you feel even the one sentence or the one concept was so big, you need many years to study it you are correctly apprehending the situation. So don't be confused. I know that's the case too. This is just a quick lecture on a topic that's huge. My words have a view and my practice has a precedent. If you do not apply the view in practice, it's difficult to understand me. Mm. So in Chinese medicine, context is everything. Actually content is not the most important thing from this kind of Chinese cultural view. Content is not important. Why? Because it's constantly changing. Right? Even this table, this chair. A hundred years ago, do you think that the material that makes this table, it looked like this? Was it like this? No, it was somewhere else, right? And a hundred years from now, it will be somewhere else too. That's content changing, right? But what's important right now is that it functions as a table. That's the context. It's way more important. In Chinese medicine, it's the same thing. It's why we ask our patients questions like how you feel. What's going on in your life right now, right? Because these contextual questions actually hugely important in terms of determining their health status, right? Chinese medicine, we're always trying to actually kind of merge subject and object, yin and yang, okay? Those who understand are rare and those who practice are rare and deep, yet it's by these few that we measure the greatness of the way. So, I'm all quoting from one of my teacher's translations of the Tao Te Ching. Um, and the point is, we keep referring back. We keep referring back, right? And, and, and we use a standard of uh, these people who were like professional, professional astrologers, professional self-cultivators, professional uh, people whose professional sphere include this kind of internal work, right? Those are our standards. So, um, it seems like, it's like today, right? If you, someone who writes a book on quantum theory, they really need to be a quantum physicist. It's not just anyone can write that book, right? Well, the ancient classics were written by people whose whole lifetimes were spent, right? So that's also something to consider. It's, there's, again, there's many layers here. The adept practitioner shows the unrefined appearance but conceals the precious shape. You always go looking for the most extraordinary things in the ordinary place in the ordinary place, right? The things of the highest value will actually be the hardest to apprehend. Okay, so now we've said what we need to say to, to get into this. Here's the introduction of the course. If we were teaching this at the university, right, this is the required text, and actually, I recommend everybody who's interested in anything I'm saying, get this book. Okay, it's not expensive. Um, it's a translation of a manual that's kind of the preparatory manual for anybody who wants to study any of the Taoist arts by somebody who was actually initiated into a lineage 
uh, one of our teachers uh, who passed away unfortunately about six years ago. But he was one of my teachers, his name was Liu Ming, and that's the website you can get the book at. It's called The Three Treasures. Uh, basically moving, breathing, and, and uh, eating. Right? It's like, could we just use moving, breathing, and eating to form internal practice? Yes. Those three things, which we all take for granted, actually so profound can open the doors to internal practice. It's correct. So it's kind of the prerequisite. But he talks a lot about the calendar. Eating for the calendar, uh, breathing, doing qigong by the calendar, moving, doing exercise by the calendar. And even kind of our moods and our, our internal environment is very affected by the calendar. There's a bunch of other recommended texts. If anybody wants this uh, PowerPoint, I'm happy to send to you free after this. And I think we have all your information, right? Uh, da Yuan Circle. I'll write it down. www. Da Yuan, da Yuan Circle org. Okay. Who you mean? He is the teacher. He is actually one of the founders of the university. Um, the Three Treasures. Time is chi. Time is one of the phenomena of chi. Right? Again, I'm not going to say chi is energy, because then it makes it sound like we're talking about charged particles in Western physics, which is definitely chi from this standpoint of the classics and not saying that. It's actually saying the opposite. So other recommended. So there's apps you can buy that will give you the Chinese almanac, which is where I'm going to refer for all this material from the Chinese almanac which is actually the Tongshu, right? That's what it's called in Chinese. It's called the Tongshu. More copies of this book published than any other book in history, even the Bible, yes. The Tongshu, the Chinese Almanac. Because the Chinese Almanac is used all throughout East Asia. Okay, It's the same Almanac. It's based on the same lunar solar cycles. Going back to actually Han Dynasty China about 2,200 years ago. Um, the, the math and science, there was a giant golden age for about 300 years where all the cultures in each a East Asia, all the tribes got together and agreed on common ways of counting the lunar cycle, the solar cycle, and when they interact, what it meant. Okay, the tone shift. It's, it's, the Koreans will also use this, the Japanese will use it, the Vietnamese will use it, everyone in East Asia, North and South is using some version of this book, okay? Uh, but it's just math. So anyway, the Tongshu. You can get the Tongshu as an app on your phone um, to, to help you, to, every day it actually gives you advice based on the calendar. Oh, today's the day to eat this, today's the day to do that. Oh, try not to do that. Um, go to bed early or whatever. Today's a good day for a wedding even. However, today's a good day for a, it has all kinds of, all just based on the math of observing the precedence over time. When on this kind of day someone had a wedding, it went well. They were married a long time. They had a very successful marriage. So over time, we, we know this. Every time that kind of day shows up, good day to get married. Or opposite, they got married on that day, oh, it didn't go well. Maybe in the future we don't tell people get married on that day. Because time is seen as a factor here, not just as arbitrary. Right? Here are the learning objectives. Right? Um, also, in, if, when I'm teaching this class at the university, we also talk about how this also relates to dreaming. Um, okay, where did this come from? All this material came from a combination of different sources. It's my background as a lay astrologer, feng shui practitioner in multiple traditions. Uh, my background as a scientist and also teaching from teachers who are here at Five Branches. Um, but of course, then the rest of my, my kind of, I already told you I'm also the associate dean here, a licensed acupuncturist, faculty member. I also teach traditional Chinese martial arts, Gong Fu. Um, and so that, I've been teaching for about two years with my Sikwa now. It's been training there over 15. And before the pandemic, five, six days a week, uh, traditional Chinese long fist, and Shaolin, if, if people are interested. We also do Tai Chi, Bagua at the academy. Um, but I, I'm our long fist and Shaolin teacher. If you want more info, I can give you later. Um, view method and fruit. Okay, so I, what I've been talking about this whole time is the view, is how to understand what I'm about to say. I haven't given you any content yet. I've only said, I've only given context, right? That's the view. Okay, the method means 
with the content, what do we do? The fruit means what's the outcome when we do that with the content. It's basically the same as the scientific method, right? Form a hypothesis, perform the experiment, come to a conclusion. All traditional Chinese arts, these three parts have to agree. It has to be the method, the view, agreeing with the method, agreeing with the, the fruit, leading to a new view. If we only have the view and not the method, guess what? It's not going to yield results. If we have the view and the method, the, the fruit's not coming out means something didn't work, right? It's all, and actually, martial arts has this, Chinese medicine, has astrology, they all have view, method, and fruit. So Chinese, even though it seems like, right, so many thousand years, all kinds of stuff coming, right? Silk Road, uh, India, Europe, uh, the Middle East, everything's, there were periods of time, these golden ages of science and math and culture, right? So you would think that the Chinese tradition would just be kind of eclectic. It's not eclectic. It's synthetic. Meaning, the hallmark of Chinese culture is to take everything in and relate it consistently, not just patchwork style. So view, method, and fruit must be in alignment. Okay? This is so important because when I say view, Western people hear like philosophy, and then they go, ah, psh, philosophy, well, that's just talk. Really, 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 right? Oh, Western science doesn't have philosophy. Really, materialism is not philosophy? To say that matter is reality, that's not philosophy? Then what's happening in your dreams? How about your feelings? How about the things that we can't find particles to explain? You think those things just aren't happening? Chinese medicine says that argument's not even worth our time. We just take human experience. What's your experience? This is reality. Don't argue about it. So again, subject-object merged, to the point that we couldn't even pull them apart if we wanted to. Chinese medicine doesn't imagine some place where there's no humans observing in a vacuum and basing reality on that. They say this is like wild imagination. That actually is dangerous. View, method, fruit. Okay, moving on. So part of this view is also Tian Di Ren, human, earth. Uh, sorry, heaven, earth, human beings in the middle. Um, the idea is that our definition of what it means to be a human being is actually just in relationship to other things. Right? So the definition of a human being is not based on ten fingers, ten toes, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. It's not a physiological basis to define humanity. It's are we in relationship with our internal and external environments? That's what defines humanity, right? The, again, view, view. I'm going to give you a lot of views so that when we get to the things I'm going to talk about, you'll go, rather than just hearing say, oh, fall time do this, winter time do that, spring time do this, I'm talking about something bigger, so we have to establish that, right? True human agency is a phenomenon based on emptiness, which is a context for reciprocity. Right? It's like the whole, I don't know if you've heard the story about the cups, right? It's like a student that's, uh, like students are like teacups. If the teacup is full already, guess what? You can't put tea, right? If the teacup's broken, guess what? It won't hold tea. If the teacup has some other taste from something else that's not clean, when we put our clean tea in, it won't taste like tea. So best students are like an empty, clean teacup with no holes and not broken. Emptiness. That's what I mean when I say emptiness. Sometimes we hear the word emptiness in relationship to Buddhism or Taoism, and people think you're saying nihilism. People think you're saying, so you just say, believe nothing? No, no, no. Actually, it's just meaning I'm holding space inside to be empty so I can respond. Rather than walk around with my things, I'm going to press on everywhere I go, right? So very important for a student and for calendar study, too. Gan Ying, okay, and one more concept. Gan Ying, if we look it up in the Chinese dictionary, right now you're like, it's just the sound, I don't know what, right? No, but so what it means is, it's a response, it's a reaction or interaction. It's in, like, the analogy would be in, in, in religious context. Gan Ying 
will be the principle that allows the individual person to actually be in communion with something bigger and larger, right? Is how is that mediated? How does the individual experience open up and bleed over into some bigger experience, right? It's called Ganying. It's actually the same thing of like, why does the cicada wake up when it wakes up? Why does the uh, mosquito know to lay its eggs when it knows to lay its eggs? It's actually this Ganying is kind of a reciprocity, reciprocity with the environment. It's considered like, uh, in, when a Westerner talks about this, we will hear like causality. So you're saying it's causing. But it's not that actually, right? It's, it's a relationship. It's, it's a back and forth. Like the, the heaven chi phenomenon, which is like seasons and also um, everything that is kind of invisible that's happening in the air that uh, we can only notice from like, uh, the phenomenon, right? We look at phenomenon to notice a tangible phenomenon to infer what's going on intangibly, right? How does that work, right? Why in the morning you're having energy and at night you're sleepy, let's just say. Maybe you're not, maybe you're sleepy in the morning you have energy at night. But anyway, let's say, typically you wake up in the morning with energy. Why? It's this principle, it's Dan Yin, because we are synchronized actually with everything, whether we know it or not. Right? Gan Ying. So Liu Ming, this was his quote about it. The relationship is alive and like all living relationships is not exactly predictable. It's okay. One's expectations are derived from history, tradition, custom, ancestors, but one must keep those customs creative, alive, ongoing and thriving for the whole systematic relationship to be abundant, which is without saying the goal of human life. Right, so what we're talking about is based on ancient wisdom, but it's only valuable if it's alive today, right now. And in Chinese tradition, this is very important to understand, is in the Chinese tradition, books are not venerated. Right, maybe in Buddhism they are, but Buddhism is kind of outside from China, right? It came from India. So in Taoism and Confucianism, it's not the book that's venerated, it's the teacher. Because without the teacher, who can explain this book? It's nothing. It's a tool, the book's just a tool. So the emphasis becomes the tradition as living. If we had to choose, and the library's gonna burn down, or the people aren't gonna survive, we'll choose the people and let the library burn, because those people can write more books. The library didn't really matter, right? This is a little different in Western tradition. Sometimes we really venerate the book. The book is more than the person. The Chinese think this is like a huge confusion. So the goal of human life, right? It's not exactly predictable. It's also not literal is the other thing that I would encourage everyone to consider. It's like if and when you study Chinese medicine, you're reading books like the Huangdi Neijing or these ancient classical texts, they're not intended to be, again, they're, they're, all the texts are reference texts. We can think about it that way. Come to life with the teacher. And we can talk more about Gan Ying, right? And I can send you, this is from a different book. It's long reading. I want to get to the, I, I feel you're understanding what I'm saying. Here are the questions we need to ask ourselves moving forward for the context of this course. How are we oriented to participate in the environment we find ourselves in? Do we want to participate? And just ask yourself honestly, it's no, no judgment with these questions, right? Do we have the space in our hearts and minds to develop a relationship with the environment inclusively? Can we dissociate from toxic narratives that are dominated by the momentum towards suffering that's being generated, right? Because people get caught up in their own stuff and, and you know, it's, it's harmful for them and actually it's harm, harming everybody. So um, we just need to be aware when that's the case. Hello, sir. It's you. It's I. Um, do we have the patience and forbearance necessary to contemplate these subjects, right? Because um, if we don't, then this kind of study is not, no point to it, actually. Even just to talk about the calendar, we have to have uh, self-cultivation to talk about this, actually. Good. Uh, so the preparatory conduct, right? So here's all the things I would encourage somebody who's about to undergo a experimental uh, 
study in Chinese calendar, right? There's some things you need to change maybe about your own conduct to prepare for that experiment. This, again, is more in the context of if I were teaching this as a class, right? But generally, we should avoid the following or remediate them to the best of our ability. Recommendations below, they stabilize the spirit, regulate the body so that the reciprocity of ganying can be conscious engaged. Growing an experience of reciprocity with the environment is our chief goal in this course. It is itself the essence of all forms of alchemy. The preparatory recommendations exist to guide, not to be used dogmatically. And actually, in the whole Chinese tradition, fundamentally, none of it even can be used dogmatically. Because if you try to do that, you'll turn it into something else that's no longer the thing. So uh, you actually can't be used dogmatically. So these are the, the uh, kind of things that I encourage students to consider. It's like, you um, need to check out your diet, um, need to make sure that uh, internally speaking, you know, you're balanced in terms of your kind of sexual conduct as well. You need to make sure you're eating enough food, sleeping well, hygiene's good, try to limit obsessive thinking. Um, if you have vomiting or diarrhea, if you're uh, irritated by things like cold and breezes, if you have a lack of appetite, any of these things actually you probably want to address medically to stabilize and harmonize the individual so they can actually study. Chinese astrology, right? So here are all the base. This is the what I teach in this class. Okay, and now that that's the end of um, module zero. Now let's talk about the same. Hey, 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 before, before you go again, though, it's like you had five points. You know, and you know, if you don't have time, whatever. But could you hit those again? I can provide you with a copy of the um, PowerPoint. I don't want to interrupt. Like no, that. totally, totally. I'm trying to get my head around it. No, it's you're, okay. You're moving fast. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. And it seems like good info, yeah. and I want to get it. So. Yeah. Talk later. Well, later. I'll always be here. Right on. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me open up the right one. Here we go. Okay, so. Um, from the Huainanta, here was the thing, here was the, the quote for that week of class I wanted everybody to think about. But um, the next part we're going to talk about is actually the seasons itself, okay? So in Chinese medicine, the calendar is based on the interaction between the sun and the moon, and mostly just the sun and the moon, actually. The stars also move. Only a little bit, but mostly it's the sun and the moon moving through the stars. So we have a solar yang, lunar yin. El solar la lun. Yes. So solar chi, right? Solar chi, medical connotations of solar chi help us preserve our yang, guard the yang. It's considered a yang influence, right? It's more related to chi and blood, less to essence. Um, it's related specifically to channel theory, because the chi in our channels is also synchronized with solar chi. Okay? Our internal body essence is synchronized with the lunar chi. Okay? It's related to the function of the flu organ. Sorry, dear. Oh, of course. Of course. And you know that you... Yes, I can go to, uh, I can go to this one. Okay. Thank you. I just changed it. Okay. Yang, solar chi is yang, okay? Um, also, solar chi is related to like our ideas of what it means to be productive or worldly, right? Like waking up in the morning, uh, going to work, and then coming home in the evening, resting, going to bed, right? All these kind of concepts is actually our own yang chi, the part of our mind that is functioning while awake, Right? This is all in the category of yang, right? It's only it's actually less than half the picture. I think if you want to weight it, 51% yin is more important. This 49% yang, yeah, gotta have it. Movement for sure. It's the world of the senses, right? Um, it's what we consider known and unknown. It's a world that exists in duality, this solar world, this yang world, right? Um, to track it, we can use the four seasons, the 12 solar indices, the 24 chi nodes is probably the best. Um, but again, to, in the context of that, we need to go through the whole 15 weeks of this class. Today, we're just going to talk about the four seasons, okay? Well, you know, wow. <laughs> I'm trying to get my head around it, but I hear you. It's an introductory talk. Right on. Uh, lunar chi, right? So the lunar chi, medical connotations help us preserve essence, refine essence, okay? Internal condition. Considered a yin influence. 
which invites us to go beyond duality, right? Like the moon itself is empty, only reflecting the light of the sun. This internal environment, internal experience, um, it's kind of uh, formless, which is the opposite from the, the yang experience, which is very formed, right? Formed to the point of getting lost in form. Um, it's related channel-wise to the eight extraordinary meridians, specifically the Dew channel. There's 28 points on this Dew channel, and those relate to the 28 days in each moon. Okay. It's also related to the function of the Zang organs, the internal organs, and transformation of essence. Relative to the terms open and close, which is the moon full and empty. Okay, so when the moon is full, our essence is full. Our organs can open up to transform more chi. When the moon is, is new or empty, our essence is also on the low end, and the organs will be more closed to store the essence, okay? So excess conditions worse in the full moon, deficient conditions worse in the new moon, okay? Okay, and then there's more, more to talk about, lunar chi. But really, this talk here is about the four seasons. If this, that's what I want you to go home with, is some advice and information on the four seasons, okay? The way we talk about the four seasons in Chinese is called, uh, it's like the jie qi, which means like the qi nodes or the segments in time, right? So I can draw a circle and everyone's gonna get like this, right? But actually, inside each of these, okay, there's seven, and I'm not, my lines probably aren't gonna be perfect here, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? No cigar. Right. Um, in, each, in each of the seasons, there are seven two-week periods of time, and that's how specific the Chinese calendar gets, is every two weeks, your conduct can change, your diet should change, even your, your, um, what you're thinking about and the kind of ways we can organize our activity internally can change to match the, the kind of like, I'm saying seasons, but really in Chinese, we're talking about the heaven chi, Okay, heaven chi. So heaven in Chinese medicine, we're not talking about the afterlife. We're not talking about, um, you know, some place where some immutable version of you that's not material goes and has another life forever. It's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about everything above the horizon is heaven. Everything, stars, moon, sun, wind, uh, everything non-material is heaven. Okay, everything below the horizon and everything material is earth. Right? It's the interaction of these two things. That's our experience as human beings. Okay, well, today we're gonna to talk about just the four seasons. Okay. My girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chapter one of the Neijing, we can talk, we can talk about the more uh, quotes about the seasons. A little history, right? Important thing to remember, uh, Time is shape is a circle, okay? Time's shape is a circle. Earth's shape is a square, okay? And maybe some of you have seen this. You've seen this before, right? Circle and square. No, right? define. Right, so, so this is a picture of the universe. So, and then Earth is a square? Yes. Define. Why is that significant? Uh, Why is Earth a square? Okay, so. There are a bunch of squares. This? Yeah, book, yeah. Okay, it's book made stuff. of matter. Yeah. This matter has limitations. Yeah. It's not unlimited. Yeah. Now tell me which is limited and which unlimited? Square versus circle. Uh, well, you know, it depends. everything depends on perspective, but I, you know, I would go with the circle. It's unlimited. It's un, you know, it's like Correct. Yeah. So matter, earth. Time. So, really? No, so, 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 well, but Earth is like so beyond a square. You look at the planets, look at the Earth, it's like, wow. That's you something know, else. So you, well, humans Conceptually, are maybe a square. Right, the I Chinese concept of D, Earth. Not English concept of Earth. Well, the first 15 minutes we talked about this. Yeah, I might have missed that. Heaven and Earth. Yin and Yang. I mean, it, well, you know, sorry to interrupt. Okay, you go. But we, I can't answer all the questions. Correct. Just, yeah. Well, now you're in the middle of a thing, sorry to interrupt. 
Okay, heaven and earth. Heaven's a circle, earth is a square. Limited versus lim unlimited. Uh, defined versus undefined. Matter versus non-material. That's how, so not the planet Earth, not, uh, no, not, those are actually different concepts. Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Four seasons, right? So there's, here's what I want you to focus on. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter, okay? Now the four seasons also, they correspond with symbols, right? And so maybe you've heard in Chinese there's the green dragon or the red phoenix or the white tiger or the black turtle. These are just heraldic symbols to evoke correspondences with the four seasons, right? Spring. Okay, now we'll talk about the four seasons. So spring, in Chinese medicine, the element associated with spring is wood element, okay? Now I say the word wood and wood element, and again, we're not talking about wood, like literal wood. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the symbol of spring, which represents gro new growth, new growth, green, okay? Not like oak wood, no, that's too literal. Again, Chinese tradition not focusing on anything material, actually. Right? And also, it's non-literal. It's all symbolic. Nothing's literal in Chinese tradition. Nothing literal. Okay? So it's very difficult to translate into English for that reason, because the English language is only literal. Oh, so everything, that's why the first line of the Tao Te Ching says, the Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get out of the way. No. Wood element, the chi, the chi of spring is wind, which means what? Movement. Springtime is the time for movement. Wintertime was the time for what? It's literally the time for stagnation. That's when everything should stop. And in nature it does, right? No, spring or winter. Winter is when it stops. Yeah, yeah. Spring is when it moves. Yeah, okay. That's why spring we need movement, must have movement. Right? East is the direction we'll consider uh, as being symbolically related with the springtime and the rising of the sun and the arrival of Yang Qi, Yang Qi coming back from darkness in the winter. Right. So, also, wood element, springtime, youth. Absolutely, please. Yes, yes, please. Um, you came right at the perfect time. Now we're fine. We're to the content part. Um, I've been explaining to them the context of Chinese calendar study, which is so huge. Um, okay. Uh, east is the direction. Eight is the number. Eight is the number. Alan. We're soon having to do the switch. I'll let you do okay, the Okay, let me know. Let me know. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Easy, easy. Okay. They have already understood the most essential part. Then. Okay. Yes. And eight is abundance. Different traditions, so we can't, we're, again, it's the Chinese tradition is not eclectic, it's synthetic, right? Yeah, so it's, yes, the view, we have the view. So it's a specific eight, uh, anyway. Sour is the flavor, okay? Um, yes? For, for winter. Now sour is the flavor for? Spring. Oh, for spring, okay. In the Neijing chapter 2, the Si Qi Tiao Shen, how to use the four seasons to regulate our spirit. The three months of spring are a time of birth, generation, and renewal of Yang. Keyword is generation, and generation means from, um, actually this, this is backward, it should be from nothing to something. So the springtime is when we suddenly see insects come out of the ground, it's when we suddenly see buds arrive on the, the plants, when uh, we suddenly see the new baby animals show up, seems like they came from nowhere, and actually they did. It is kind of magical. It's not just uh, because the plant had some hormones, and yeah, but why? Again, why? Where did, what, cut, right? This ganying, that's why we cut this, all this actually, the shape coming out from this reciprocity, right? Springtime is about that. It's about generating, right? So even in ourselves, it's a good, important time of year to kind of renew our inspiration, right? 
to, to have that energy to feeling going forth, right? To be inspired. In, on the human face, the wood element is the eyebrows and, and kind of the brow ridge, right? Um, and also the eyeballs, our, our, our vision is wood element, okay? So like even in your dreams, like how are you able to see in your dreams? Do you have dream eyeballs? Where, where is that? Where, how did you do that? It's your wood element. You actually don't need eyeballs to have vision. In your dreams, prove it. Well, Stevie Wonder, you know. That's right. You know? Vision is a characteristic of being a human being. And it's a beautiful thing, though. You know, I'm losing it. So. Well, springtime. Time for our eyeballs. Good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Yes. Blessing. Um, in the spring, it's very important. Don't uh, be too harsh. That's the autumn time is the time for that. In the spring, you no, want to be oh, very... Wait, wait. In autumn, you could be like, you know, hardcore, bust people on their chops, whatever. That's the point of autumn time, because winter's coming, and we better be prepared. Oh, so, so we you, can't you, be... you got to call somebody, do it before winter? <laughs> call somebody on their BS, whatever? It's like... It's the best time to do it. To go to blows. Wow, interesting. Sorry. In the calendar, when the autumn begins, the emperor decides who will be pardoned and who will not be pardoned. Because if you have officials in the government who are corrupt, the winter time is when the food must be shared. And that has to stop in the fall time or else people will die. Oh, so yeah, call people on their BS. In the fall. No, right on. I get it. In the spring, it's the opposite. It's abundance coming. Hey, there's babies around. Don't be harsh. That made so much sense. Thank you. Yes. It really does. It's be you have a question? No. Okay. Continue. Hey, come on in. Hey, everyone's making it over. Okay, great. So anyway, um, uh, disobeying the mandates. So like, so like having inappropriate conduct in the spring will harm our liver. And it will actually engender anger throughout the year. Right? The, the generous time is the spring time. It's for generosity. It's for sharing. Okay? Uh, again, wait until the yin time. If you want to draw the line, that comes like autumn, winter, but not spring and summer. Right? Okay. Um, Where generosity prevails. Correct. Yes. If the springtime she's not cultivated, the summertime she will not have the opportunity to flourish in abundance. So the next season is summer. Everything opens up, right? So if we weren't generous in the spring, then it can't open up in the summer. If we held back in the spring, no fruits in the summer. That makes sense. Cold syndromes would be contracted in the summer because the springtime of the yang chi needs to go out. If the yang chi didn't go out, the cold will press in because you're still half yin from the winter. Anyway, springtime. Um, it's safe to harmonize in Chinese medicine. These are all treatment principles. This is all talking about if you're trained in Chinese medicine, you'll understand the context of all these, even to the point of using certain points in the springtime, flavors, exercise is best in moderation, no oversweating in the spring, not yet, summertime oversweating, perfectly fine, okay? Then autumn time, reduce again, then wintertime, best not sweat, actually. Everything should stay inside, right? Correct. Art appreciation is very helpful in the springtime if you've lost connection with this inspiration. Art appreciation, music, you like to read, read a new book. You like a movie, watch a new movie in the springtime. Autumn time, winter, that's back to the favorites, nothing new. Make sense? You see how there's this, see how it's all, yes. Oh, be exuberant when, when the sun's shining, you know, otherwise like, you know, go to your comfort zone. Yin and yang. Thank you. Art appreciation, sleep. Uh, Here's more advice. Okay, summertime. Let's move on to summer because I'm sure that Eleanor's going to come in and say, you, you got to tell me something. Yeah, no, no, but summertime in the limbs is easy. <laughs> we'll go sublime on that. Sorry. <laughs> in the Neijing, in chapter 2, Su Qi Tiao Shen, the three months of summertime are for growth, fullness, and ascendancy of yang, right? The key word is growth. Just like in the springtime, it was generation. From nothing to something. 
Well, guess what? In the springtime, we went from nothing to something. In the summertime, that something grows, right? So it's okay in the summer. You want to go to bed late? It's fine. You want to wake up early? It's fine, right? It works. Why? Because the sun's out longer. And our bodies will actually, again, our yang chi following the sun, right? So actually waking and sleeping with the sun, summertime is the most activity, okay? But if for that same reason, during the summer, yang has trouble descending. So sleep will naturally be lighter at this time. So if you're a clinician, your patient's saying, ah, I'm not sleeping as deep right at the height of summer. It's actually not a disease at that point. That's actually them normally feeling the summer. If they have the same problem in the dead of winter, that's a problem, right? Because the winter should be sleeping a lot. You can't get out of bed. That's a normal bed, right? Don't avoid the sunshine during the summer. Some people habitually avoid the sunshine for whatever reason. Don't do it during the summer. You should get some sun in the summer, right? Summer sun has alchemical properties relating to all everything we've talked about, right? To embody and engender these feelings that match the seasons. Actually, sunshine in the summer is just critical for us. A little bit, right? And don't avoid sweating in the summer either. Springtime, kind of not too much. Autumn time, less. Wintertime, none. Right? Okay. Let me see. What else can I say? Done? Am I, am I done? You are probably Okay, okay, quickly then. Autumn time is just the opposite of springtime. We already kind of talked about this, right? That's the time to start going to bed earlier. That's the time to sweat less. Uh, and also start cultivating your internal resources. Don't overspend your internal resources. Very careful. Prepare for winter. The winter time, everything draws in. Everything draws in. And that's like a magical time, if we've been following all year when it draws into the winter, actually can heal us on the deepest level if we follow this kind of, we, everything can renew from all the resources pulling in. Okay. Okay. Um, I think my time is up. We, we only got to talk barely about, I uh, know, but so this is really interesting, right? I also teach this in the program. Right, and this relates, what we've been talking about here relates to all your theory classes, your practice, that this was the, like the core of understanding kind of how our chi is moving actually based on this calendar, right? Hey, hey, hey. Okay, but I'm out.